Greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus. It has been a long time since you have heard from me, and this update is also very difficult to write. Things are very challenging and hard right now. On the other hand, we are really seeing God is working in our lives, and there's a lot of emotions. And I was divided between giving you just the positive and focus on the spiritual side and the good things God is working our life, or if I should give you a bigger picture of what is happening right now. And I decided to be transparent. I'm sitting on day 253, beginning of my nine months in prison. And it's very difficult for us to understand how this can be possible, but I've done no crimes. I'm here because of lies from people who are enemies of the gospel. And we are talking about crazy lies as such as human trafficking, fraud, abuse of children, and weapon smuggling. But how can a person be treated as guilty without any proof presented in a court or any charges? I, I just truly don't understand it. Why have the authorities not checked where these lies come from? I don't understand that. If I were accused of these crimes, then any honest investigation would have confirmed that it's all lies. It's all false accusations. And this would be easy to confirm. And it seems only right that the authorities would be concerned about the source of repeating lies like that against me and investigate the responsible behind such lies. There's there's many things I really don't understand and I feel left alone. Sometimes I feel like the world out there is just moving on and uh, forgetting me. And it is hard right now. And this is a side I just need to not focus too much on because if I really get deep into these thoughts, it will consume me, especially the last week when my wife Lena has become sick. Me and my wife, who 27 years, have truly been amazing to all of this. She has really stepped up and taken a role she never had before. As we could not live in our rented house any longer because the lease was up, she was the one, not me, but she was the one finding a new home, building it, organizing the moving, and doing everything that followed. She's also been the one informing people out there about what is happening here and informing me about what is happening out there. She's been trying to answer emails, Facebook, message, text as much as she could. And she's often been stressed over that and the whole pressure with the legal team and helping to manage, manage the legal team and just holding the house together. A few weeks ago, everything has just said stop. It just said stop. Her, her body shut down and she needed to go to the hospital. And I was locked up here, crying, praying, and felt so helpless. And it was truly hard. She, the leader, is now home, having some medicine and trying to get some rest. But the stress and anxiety that have come with it have really taken a toll on her. We don't have any long phone calls anymore. We don't do video calls because she cannot do anything right now. She don't go online. She cannot read any message. And she also normally helped me to record these updates. But this time I have other people to help me. And I've never seen Lena like that before. And all of this has just made me locked up here so much harder than it was before. Still not knowing when I will come out. We don't understand what is happening and how this can happen and why I'm here. And we as a family are really in the greatest fight we have ever been in. I'm here, but Lene is in home, prison at home. And it's truly uneasy right now. Some uh, good friends have moved into our home to uh, take care of everything and to be there for Lene. And I'm, I'm truly thankful for that. So this is the reality right now. And uh, as you understand, there is a lot of emotions. And I I try to keep away from all of this because it just will take me down and make it so much harder to be locked up.
And, and we just need to keep believing that God is faithful because he is. God is really working and he is really transforming us. And we see that. Last week, I shared communion in my cell with one of the new strong disciples I've led to Jesus. And afterwards, I, I suddenly became so thankful to God for sending me here. Yeah, it, it was so special. It just it just came over me from the deepest part of my heart. I was thanking him, praising him for sending me here, for allowing this to happen because he has truly transformed my life through all of this. He has spoken, he has revealed his word to me, and I'm truly thankful for everything. And it was a really special moment. Two weeks ago, God, he spoke to me, and I will never forget it. He called me to give out a teaching series when I come out. A series about the kingdom of God, about the return of Jesus and the end time we are living in. When I got arrested, I got a Bible. First, I read it all from one end to another. Then I started to study the book of Acts, the letters. Then I started to study the different persons in the Bible, the people in the Old Testament and the people in the New. And then at one time, I really noticed how the, in the New Testament was preaching Jesus out of the old. And I thought the way they were doing it. So I decided to go back and do a series about Jesus in the Old Testament. And over the next few months, I instead ended up with a teaching from Genesis to Revelation about Jesus and the kingdom of God. And it was so special. I was teaching Jesus and the kingdom of God out of Genesis, out of Exodus, out of Leviticus. We were looking at, I was looking at Daniel. I was teaching a lot of things out of Revelation. People out there never heard me teach about before. And it really opened my eyes. The Bible opened up in a way I've never, ever experienced it before when it comes to Jesus, the new covenant, the kingdom of God, the day of the Lord when he will appear again and be a live this life. And I started to teach this here in my cell, day after day to some of the inmates, and it became very, very, very powerful. And it just changed me, changed my life. And then Sunday, February 19, three weeks ago, God spoke to me. He said, this is why you are here, Tom. And I understood suddenly, yes, I'm here because God wanted to reveal all of this to me. He wanted to reveal his word to me. And he wanted me to give out this teaching to all of you out there when I come out. I would never have been able to do this out there. I, I was just too busy. I was just too busy in my everyday life with internet, Facebook, message. I had too many distractions in my life. But in here, there had been no internet. No YouTube videos, no phone calls, just a Bible, just a Bible, a pen and a piece of paper. Yeah, many pieces of paper. And they have become, until now, 24 lessons I've put together out of many more. But 24 lessons that's ready to go. Teaching that will help you all to take off those glasses and truly see the Bible in a new way. He has set me free, and I see so many things I've never seen before when it comes to the kingdom of God and the end times we are living in. And this is one thing I'm truly, truly thankful for because it has changed my life. And I know that this is going to have so much fruit out there. I actually got the same experience here as I got years ago when God called me to do the, the online pioneer school. And we've seen how that has changed thousands of people all over the world. And I truly believe this is going to do the same. Another thing is that I can read the Bible now. It's not that I could not read the Bible before. I've never been able to read the English Bible, of course, the way I read my Bible in Danish. And that has really influenced the way I've been teaching because it's been very difficult for me to teach with the English Bible because I'm just not a good English reader. And I've often wanted to be able to teach with the English Bible the way I would have been teaching if I was in Den Denmark with the English Bible, because it would be a different way. I would be standing with the Bible in the hand and I would be reading words by words and just going through the Bible with people. But I've never been able to do that here in America 
but I can do that now. <laughs> the, the last eight months have really changed me, and now I can read the Bible a way I was never able to read the Bible before. And this is going to change the way I will be teaching from now on, and I'm so excited for that. Besides that, I've lost 44 pounds. That is 20 kilos. And I'm physically strong, stronger than I'd ever been before. When I got arrested, I don't think I could do one push-up when I came in. Now I do around 200 push-ups a day. My body had changed. I've always had a high blood pressure. And it's always been a problem for me with the high blood pressure, but it's perfect now. My blood pressure is perfect. My body is stronger than ever before. My mind has changed. The way I read the Bible, it's changed. And God has changed my life in so many ways. 22 hours per day in my cell, alone with God, in His Word, reading, praying, thinking, meditating, dreaming, training. And I'm truly thankful for this opportunity. And also for the life that has been changed here in prison. But it, it is hard at the same time, as I said. On one side, it's beautiful. God has changed my life, God is speaking, God is working. And on the other side, it's very, very, very hard right now. It's hard for Lena especially. But I can also see God is revealing things to her. He's speaking to Lena and, and he's changing her right now. And we need to believe that what God has started in her life, he's going to finish. So you can hear there's a lot of emotions. On, and on one side, it's like, we come to a point where we, we, we cannot any longer. We, we really need help right now. We, we need people to stand up and help us. We need the church to stand up and help us right now. We need the media to stand up and, and do something about this, to shout out loud, get all this insanity to stop and nothing else. And in a country like America, and so there's a lot of emotions that don't understand it and what is happening and why can people not help me? And it's, it's very hard and I, I feel I'm, I'm losing my life and my family. But on the other side, hallelujah, God is in control and he knows what he's doing. And I need to believe that everything has a purpose and I don't need to feel desperate and believe that he will let me out when time is. He will never let us down, and he will not let us down now, here in our darkest moment. But as again, it's also a beautiful moment. Our life is being transformed, and I know that this is going to bear so much fruit in the future. And I believe that God will take care of Lena also. So this is what I want to share with all of you out there. Keep praying, keep supporting us, don't forget us. You can find more information, of course, about the case on friendsoftalton.com. And there's just been a new update there a few days ago. For our personal friends and family out there, you who have been long in contact with Lena, she's just not able to do anything to answer any of you or read any of the message. So if, if you have a greeting to her or want to reach out to me, I have a word or something, you, you can do it to friends of Torben at gmail.com or through the website friends of Torben. So you're welcome to, to contact us through there. I want to say here and then, stay strong. Follow Jesus, hold nothing back for him. He is the truth and we want to serve him the rest of our lives. And yes, I look forward to be free and be with my family and I really look forward to share all the things with you God have revealed to me in, in, in this season because there is so many things going on and, and it's very special and it's, it's difficult to explain here in a voice message like this. But thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for your support. And, and uh, let's believe that, uh, that this is going to break through and that God he will not leave us here and it's going to be beautiful. God bless you all. Thomas and Laurent. Bye-bye.